When I think of Emmanuel Fari, the first word that comes to my mind is elegance. The elegance of his ideas, the inimitable way he could boil down a complex topic or model to a single elegant equation, and perhaps sometimes overlooked due to the sheer quality of his work, the way he could elegantly and clearly communicate his ideas. In many ways, he was the closest thing I have ever encountered to the ideal of a scholar, someone fully committed to the power of economics and the importance of research and ideas, yet deeply concerned about their real world application. Someone who would follow the truth no matter where it took him, and someone who was concerned not only with being the best, but also making sure his students and colleagues were the best that they could be. I learned so much as a PhD student simply by observing Emmanuel, the way he could dissect a complex equation, the way he would ask a polite but incisive question that quickly cut to the core of a seminar presentation, the way he approached complex topics. Indeed, seminars often turned into Socratic dialogues between the speaker and Emmanuel. I wish I'd written down more of what he said. And his seminars themselves were revelatory. I remember my astonishment at seeing his theorem on the general theory of macroprudential policy with Irvan Werning for the first time. It unified so many ideas that I'd been hearing into a single whole. I remember similar wonder in seeing a recent talk of his work with David Baki last March, which elucidated a whole new realm in macroeconomics. One of the great luxuries of being an academic in Boston was that we could take advantage of the fact that we could have Emmanuel give seminars with much greater frequency. And it was always a pleasure to see him give a talk. I also remember Emmanuel as an advisor. I would go into his office and he'd grab his tennis racket and hit imaginary tennis balls or sometimes bounce a basketball uh, off his tennis racket as he considered your work. He was always helpful and supportive, always trying to inspire you to do your best and always generous with his time. Although he could be intimidating, especially at first, you never felt like you were being judged. And he had so many students. I often wondered how he could give each of us so much time and simultaneously have the CV that he had. I don't understand how he managed to do it. One of the things that strikes me the most about Emmanuel as well was his breath. For instance, I was working on a job market paper about the housing market that was half an empirical paper with careful identification and half a search model. In short, it looked nothing like his own work. And yet he was very deeply invested in my paper and my success and remarkably helpful. I once asked him how he knew so much about search. And he said he toyed around with search models as a second year PhD student before moving on to other topics. And then after that, his graduate school office mate had worked on search. I find that especially astonishing, especially now that I advise my own students, that he could remember something that he engaged with 10 years prior and still knew them like the back of his hand, well enough to advise someone exceptionally well. I also think of Emmanuel the person. One of my most memorable encounters with him was walking home together across Boston after he'd given a seminar at BU and discussing our families. It turned out that we were both particularly influenced by relatives who had grown up as Jews in the Middle East. For him, his father, and, and for me, my grandfather. He was often a very private person, but he really opened up about his father and how he was inspired to be the economist he is on that walk. Uh, and I'll often think back to it. One image I have of Emmanuel that I think I'll always remember distinctly is the smile on his face as he stepped into the gold room where the Bretton Woods Agreement was signed for the first time. At the time, Emmanuel was working on a paper on the international financial system. And you could tell as he gazed around the room that Emmanuel was at home, in the right place. And if there is a heaven, I expect one would find Emmanuel in that gold room, deep in conversation with Keynes about economics and immensely happy. We'll miss Emmanuel. He was a tremendous gift. Uh, and I can't imagine economics without him.